Hello, hello, and welcome back to Limits. So it's uh, it's been a hot minute since I've played Limits, but I kind of wanted to um, do Norman's route just because, you know, complete the set. And I still kind of hope that this game will continue to get updated because I do like it. So I kind of hope that Drake hasn't abandoned this project. Because I'd love to continue Dave's route, you know. <laughs> uh, let's... Is there a way to just skip straight to... Uh... Oh, nope. Way to skip to just next choice. We're going to do the green orb, you know. Is what it is. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's, like, just a skip uh, thing, but that's a little sad. You know, that that definitely make this easier, right? Like, doing these other routes and things, but it is what it is. Uh, Eggy. And... Huh. How... Oh, God. Uh, we'll change the subject. Uh, so it doesn't seem to... Want to change the subject. So, how did you get the ride? As you asked the type... I, I will say that I... I, I know that I didn't record doing this because a uh, game crash last time i recorded this so that's why doing thing but it's it's okay it's okay uh <clears throat> as you ask the tiger you safely uh, tuck back the orb inside your pocket my ride yeah the motorcycle that you parked in the front i didn't know much about motorcycles but i can see that you've you've taken care of it very well it looks like it's in top condition not to mention, but it looks really cool as well. You've got a really sweet ride. Huh. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. It's my pride and joy. Would you believe that I salvaged it by, uh, by renovating... Yeah, renovating... Renovated it from scratch. What? No way. I'm serious. It took me months to gather the parts and fixing it. In, in the end, it's well worth, the, worth it, though. Okay, maybe not really from scratch. But the condition it was in was so terrible that it might as well have been. A retired old man who lived near my place gave me the bike. The man said that he'd, uh, he'd let me uh, have it if I'm willing to fix it. He mentioned that he used it, uh, used to be in a motorcycle gang back in the days. You know, those fellas with matching leather jackets and whatnot. He was very sentimental with the bike. Said he didn't want her her legacy to die yet just yet. I thought he was cool. Was? Yeah, he passed away not too long ago. He was ecstatic when I showed him what I had done with his old bike, though. He wouldn't stop talking about it with the folks nearby. I'm happy to know that I've uh, made the old man's day. Wow, you must be one hell of a handyman to be able to salvage a whole bike. Well... I do like bikes and fixing things. Well, I do like bikes and... Oh, yeah. Uh, fixing things is just one of my many hobbies. Uh, so I uh, still have plenty of... Plenty to learn in that area. I enjoy doing it regardless. Still, salvaging a whole bike is not an easy feat, Gran. I don't think anybody can just do that. So give yourself some credit. If you put it that way, I guess I really am amazing. Okay, maybe not that much credit. Ah, uh, you started it. I did, didn't I? Maybe I should ask you a few uh, tips here and there about uh, fixing machines then. Saves me from having to hire machine um, mechanics. In that case, I could give you a couple tips when you're dealing with machines. You need to consider... 
and Tiger continues to speak for a few few minutes regarding the, uh, it's, <clears throat> you lost you are lost in his uh, blue eyes as you as he rambles you couldn't help but smile throughout okay hmm oh yeah uh, tell me in the comments how you uh, feel about this game actually I don't really know how much my audience likes or dislikes this game. Uh, I actually don't know how popular, in general, uh, this game is. Because this guy also did Steadfast, right? Like a short VN? I should probably check that out. But I don't know if it's work safe or not, so I don't know whether it's a good idea to stream it. Uh, ignore. Is what it is. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've always been kind of curious about that because, like... I don't know. People don't really... You know, people just don't talk about it. And... <laughs> you know, not as much as, like, your, your echoes and your passwords. Which are good games and I love them. And... <laughs> But, you know. Oh, okay. You know what? This was around when the game crashed last time. So we'll just... Red orb. Blue orb. Okay. I'll make a save here. Just in case it, uh, it crashes again. <laughs> Don't want to, um... I don't know. You, you know things. <laughs> I can just edit the parts together if, like, uh, it crashes again. Uh, sugar glazed. So, so bagels, right? I hate them. I don't understand. Like, I, I think I dislike bagels more than I do muffins. And I'm not just saying that to get people to, like, back off at my muffin hate, because I still do not like muffins. Uh, <laughs> but you can take solace in the fact that I don't like... I think bagels are worse, I guess. Ah, uh, Norman. Norman. Uh, I wasn't bored. Make uh, make the Norman a happy a happy bear, right? Since we're gonna be doing his route and things, wow, things happen. Do do thing. <laughs> it is what it is. Man, it's a while before the route split, isn't it? We haven't even gotten to Pierre yet, right? We're gonna visit the chief. We're gonna we're gonna do that. Well, let's go visit the chief. It's been a while since I've last seen him. Hey Jacob, I'm gonna go. Uh, have fun with your job. Huh? Oh yeah, sure. Bye. And the weasel gives me a, a small wave before focusing his attention back towards his device. I don't even know if that was the voice I gave him. I I, I recorded limits like four months ago now. Like. <laughs> You walk towards the direction that leads to the chief's office. On your way, you'd bump into the other officer on duty. Some of them offer you a, a greeting and a smile, then simply <clears throat> be on their way after seeing the badge you're wearing. Some of the other ones uh, took the time to stop and ask you a question. You didn't want to be suspicious, yet you also didn't want to tell them everything about your situation, so you simply give them the bare-bones answers. Thankfully, they seem satisfied enough to let you be on your way. So far, uh, you've noticed that there are a few, a lot fewer officers on duty than there was in the morning. <clears throat> Most of them are probably already back in their homes. You finally stopped in front of the uh, door that leads to the chief's room. Yeah, the chief's office. As you were reaching the door to knock, you uh, caught a faint sound coming from the other side. Is he sleeping? Instead of knocking, you slowly reach for the knob and carefully open the door. 
oh, he's cute. And just, uh, <laughs> and just having a nap. There on the chief's desk sat a sleeping polar bear. His head is uh, slumped on the desk, his right arm placed on top of his fuzzy head as he snored peacefully. His left arm is sprawled in front of him, and you could faintly see the object that he's loosely holding. Is that a knife? Kind of hard to see in this poor lighting. I think I should let him be. As you slowly uh, retreat back, you accidentally bump your shoulder on the frame of the door, creating a thud sound. The polar bear juts uh, uh, bolts right up, his half-asleep eyes quickly scanning the room as he straightens his form. His whole body was tense. Uh, who goes there? Oh, it's you, Dan. His whole body deflates after seeing you. How long have you been, uh, how long have I been sleeping? I'm not sure, I just got here. I'm sorry for waking you up, Chief. Uh, it's fine. Thank you for waking me up, actually. I shouldn't even be sleeping on the job in the first place. Is there anything I can help you with? Not really. I just figured that I'd visit you since I wasn't... I wasn't sure what else I could be doing after Sally left. The polar bear widen, uh, widely stretches his arms back as he uh, took a deep breath. You couldn't help but stare at his big biceps. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, my back was killing me. So you're uh, bored, are you? I guess so, uh, when you put it that way. Wow. How do we have a little chat, then? Come on, take a seat. You take a seat on one side on one of the chairs after you uh, gave him a curt nod. From where you were now, you were able to see more clearly. In his hand... You could see a small knife, and in the other is an odd-looking object. Upon further inspection, it seems to be a wooden object. Chief, what is that object you're holding? Oh, this? He gingerly held the object in front of you, uh, to allow a better view. I just made it this earlier. It's a wooden figurine. Here, take a look. With a gentle smile, he hands you a small object. Wow. It looks like it's one of those totems you can see in the, in a native tribe. Uh, the texture feels rather smooth. Did he really make this? Wow, Chief, this looks pretty cool. Did you make this? Yeah, I made it. Thanks. Is this why you're holding that knife? You point back at his right hand. Yes, it's my carving knife. It's been with me for uh, quite a long time now. He rotated the, uh, his right arm so that the knife is placed on the top of his palm. As he releases his, uh, his grip from the knife, you can see that the knife is, has seen better days. And the blade seems to still be sharp, but the handle and the uh, back part of the blade looks quite rusty. Uh, the knife doesn't look to be in, bad condition, in, in good condition. I don't know what to, you do, bleh. I don't know, I didn't know that you did this kind of stuff, Chief. Most people don't. It's fine, though. I actually prefer it that way. So you enjoy wood carving then? Yeah. It's not the popular hobby, but I picked it up when I was young. I've been doing it uh, whenever I have the downtime, when I have some downtime here. It's uh, quite peaceful and helps me get uh, my mind off things. Wow, I didn't think that a big bear a big polar bear like uh, uh, such as him would enjoy doing something like this. Isn't it hard to be doing wood carving with hands the size of the size of his? Whatever happens to the to the ones that uh, you finished, Chief? You must have uh, done quite a lot by now. They either go into my storage or I sell them. Wow, you're selling them? <laughs> That's so cool. It's it's not that cool, Dan. Honestly. Most of the time, they just go to my uh, storage anyway. Still, I could see why people would want to buy them. I definitely would. Oh? Maybe I'll cry, uh, carve something just for you one of these days, huh? <laughs> you don't have to do that, Chief. Here, <clears throat> here, you can have it back. 
you return the wooden figurine. Uh, you gave him a smile as you thank him. Thanks for letting me see it. You're welcome, Dan. The polar bear took a glance at his watch before grabbing his hat. Uh, then he he then briskly stood up while um, putting on his wait uh, putting it on his head. Sorry, uh, sorry that I can't stick around, Dan. I have some matters that I need to attend to. You stood up as well. Oh, I need to uh, go before I'm late. The polar bear walks around the room, presumably to search for, in search of something. Oh, no worries. I'll be on my way now. Uh, see you around, Chief. Ha. <clears throat> have to, uh, have a good rest, Dan. I'll see you around again. You walk out of the room. Oh, it's too bad that he had somewhere else to be. Guess he was always... He was busy, after all. He enjoys doing some woodwork, huh? That's kinda quirky. I think I'm going to bed now. I feel tired. Before that, you remember that you have to, uh, you have the granola bar that you got from your feline friend earlier. You took it out of your pocket upon further inspection. It is an uh, apple-flavored granola bar with a brand that you've never seen before. This should tide me over for tonight. Man, I already miss Dave's cooking and sandwiches. I just miss Dave. Uh, this isn't that bad. You've, uh, you've eaten the granola bar. It tastes just like an apple uh, back home. Or at least an artificial flavoring of it. I keep forgetting that I'm in a different world. At least it's a good thing that a lot of the things here are familiar to me, huh? I should probably wash up first. I'm glad that I still have that uh, kit Dave gave me earlier today. With a small um, pouch in your hand, you took a visit to the bathroom to take care of your business. After a few minutes of taking care of yourself, you exited the toilet and slowly strolled towards the infirmary. A couple of minutes of slowly walking, of slow walking, and you finally reach the door. You knock on the door. No response. Did the doc already leave for the day? You open the door slowly and let yourself in, no one around. I guess no one is here. As you approach one of the beds, you notice that there is a note placed on the top of the folded blanket. Let's see. Oh, it's from the doc himself. It says spare blanket in case you need it. Well, feel free to choose any bed, and <clears throat> and you can uh, close the curtains before you sleep. Take care. That's nice of him. I need to thank him tomorrow. Hopefully, he'll be on duty. You pick up the folded blanket and walk towards the other other end of the room. You promptly close the curtain after uh, placing down the blanket you were uh, carrying to bed. Let's get to sleep. You lie on your back staring at the ceiling as you think back to what has happened today. Today's been quite a heavy day. You turn to your side and cover yourself with uh, with the blanket that's been prepared for you. I wonder what Dave and Gran are up to. And the chief. You fell into slumber. Keep it up. The next day. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of skip, I think. So, and just in case there's another crash. <laughs> I'm scared of that now. Like, look, he's just P Pierre Go. <laughs> he do the thing, you know. Wow, I kind of forgot. Oh, this is when you're in the car ride. Right, right. It's all coming back to me. It's all coming back. <laughs> I remember there being a lot of differences in the dialogue when you're practicing because you have a different uh, orb with you. Oh, right. Yeah, this, this whole scene with Roderick. Roderick Coon. And... <clears throat> I really like Roderick. I think he's a lot of fun. I think I like Dave and Roderick the most of the five. Gran is like squarely in the middle. 
right? Right. <laughs> you pull out your uh, still jade green orb from your pocket and into your hand, mimicking the stance of your li of the lion in front of you. Yes, uh, that would be correct. Now tell me, have you ever used it by accident before? Not that I'm aware of. I don't even know what mine is capable of. It's, uh, I've been uh, carrying it around with me. Hmm. I suppose, uh, the only way to find out is to test it out, yes? Your mentor, uh, str uh, strengthens this form, letting out a deep breath before focusing in, before can you, focusing, fo fo yeah, uh, focusing his gaze into your eyes. Now be sure that you listen to me carefully and follow my every command. That orb, and I have repeatedly mentioned previously before, is not to be taken lightly. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Right. Now, watch. The lion closes his eyes as he takes another deep breath, uh, his, his right hand tightly uh, clutching his silver orb. Seconds pass before his eyes open. His eyes are, are now glowing brightly in the afternoon shine. The ethereal glow makes his appearance more intimidating than before. He quickly takes out his pen from his pocket with an, oh, excuse me, with an empty, uh, empty hand before showcasing it to you. Watch carefully, Mr. York. You give him a curt nod with your attention uh, focused on the pen he's holding. The lion strengthens his grip on the pen, crushing it on his own with his palm with ease. He releases his grip and places the mangled pen on top of his palm. Keep watching, Mr. York. We are not done yet. Soon after, to your surprise, you could see the broken pen turning into a liquid substance before slowly molding itself into uh, to become an object. You could hear a soft growl coming from your teacher. I think, th um, <clears throat> I think this shall be enough. Here, take a look. The lion passes you a black metallic object that vaguely resembles a knife. It's quite crude in terms of quality. Uh, did you just turn your pen into whatever this is? Quite sharp too. You are correct. That orb, uh, the orb that I have, allows me to bend metal objects. I am able to manipulate metallic objects at will, regardless of size or density. I've only used a tiny bit of effort to create this since it's j merely just an example. I've been able to create a much more refined equipment than this crude knife that you are holding. Man, that is cool. I wonder what mine is capable of. Well... I might be able to make an educated guess based on the color. Since it's green, it might have something to do with biological substance, substance, substances. What does that mean? Well, to put it simply, green often uh, has the ability to manipulate uh, some substance, substances within our body. A prime example would be uh, some green orb users are capable of repairing broken bones within a person's body without the need of a surgery. I believe the price is often equivalent to twice the amount used. Their quality is, of course, very depending on the orbs themselves. Perhaps some orbs are able to use less to do than the same task. So you're saying that the orb fixes bones? I'll have to use my own bones? In a way. Your bones are not going to instantly disappear. They'll just become more brittle, I believe. Still, brittle bones are prone to breaking. Hypothetically, if my orb happens to be able to fix bones, and I end up use, uh, I ended up uh, doing that, just how do I recover from it? From my brittle bones, I mean. The fastest way would be to ingest calcium-based products. All right, I should, uh, I should have thought of that. So, how do I use it? Uh, I hold my orb like this. You raise your hand in front of you, resting, resting the jade orb on the top of your palm. 
Then... The next step is to focus our and think about activating your orb. However, before you do that, make sure you uh, do not... Before you do not lose focus during the period, Mr. York. A single distraction would mean... Life or death. I'd hate to see the worst case to happen. You've got to be kidding me. Now take a deep breath and focus. Do not let your attention waver. Alright, deep breaths. The lion slowly circles you. Good, good. Now, in your mind, think about activating it. Bend it to your will. I fucking love this. <laughs> I just do, right? Like... <laughs> like, this has to be a joke for for the Yu-Gi-Oh's, right? Right? You know? Like... Ah, <laughs> oh, Galaxy shining in the darkness. Become a god of revenge and obey me as my servant. <clears throat> Descend upon us, my rank 8, Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon! I'm sorry. <laughs> With your command, the orb on your palm begins to shine bright brighter. Its jade color becomes more sa uh, saturated as it, as it gently vibrates in its place. Can't believe I actually said something, said that unironically. <laughs> <laughs> In the blink of an eye, you could feel yourself feeling lightheaded, yet rejuvenated. Good. Now, see if you can heal my cut, my uh, cut hand. The lion raises his hand towards you. His thumb is bleeding, and you can see a small cut slightly above it. Did you just cut yourself? How, how do I hold it? You may hold my arm, or my hand. It doesn't matter, as long as we are connected physically, in one way or another. Shifting my gaze from my mentor towards his hand, you hesitate for a bit before deciding to hold him by the arm. This feels a little embarrassing. You begin to focus towards the cuts, uh, using your, um, your will in an attempt to heal his hand. Heal? Healing spell? Uh, PK heal. Uh, you could uh, feel a sharp pain tugging in your stomach. Your heartbeat quickens. Miss York, relax. Focus. Easier said than done. What is this pain? You grit your teeth as you um as you refocus your attention, despite the lingering pain in your abdomen. All right. That's enough, Mr. York. You could stop by closing your eyes. But you're still bleeding. Do not overextend, Mr. York. Please listen to my command. With a sigh, you close your eyes for the moment, and the pain in your head gradually dissipating. Thank you. Well, it seems uh, that healing wound is not the orb's function. Curious. No kidding. After I went through all that, after I went through all that pain, how are you? <clears throat> uh, how are you sure that it's not the orb's function, though? Maybe I just did it wrong somehow. Well, you seem to be experiencing pain. Yes. It is usually a good indicator that the orb is active. Yet, even after you tried to healing my hand, my thumb is still bleeding. Why did you do that anyway? How else are we going to uh, test out your orb? Right. You slowly massage your head and abdomen, using each of your hands with your with your body slowly, uh, slightly hunched forward. You notice that the lion is looking around, deep in thought, as he mumbles uh, something under his breath. Perhaps. No, it could, it could, it could, but could it be? Would you like to take another go while we're still here, Mr. York? Do not push yourself beyond your limits, though. Yes, it's... L uh, I'd like to give it another another shot. I need to know uh, what my orb is capable of. 
any particular reason why. I don't know, actually. I think it's mostly just a curiosity. Right? Well, if that is your wish, then I am happy to assist you. Just let me know when you're not feeling well, and we shall hold the session for today. Sounds good. For the next few seconds, or for, for the next few uh, minutes or so, uh, excuse me, you continue attempting to discover your orb's ability, with which um, irritation causes you more pain than the last. You wonder to yourself why it is that you are you're trying so hard. You aren't sure exactly what the reason is, but there is something. Something in the back of your mind that is driving you, pushing you, expecting you to. But what is it, and why? Good. Make sure you steady your breathing. You take a deep breath and let out slowly. Your attention is focusing on the cut on your thumb. Hey, isn't that Dan? You can hear a familiar voice in the distance. Hey, it, it really is him. Yo! Gran? Without a thought, you lose your focus as you slowly turn your head towards the voice. No, Mr. York, do not lose your focus! The orb shines brighter than before. You could feel a great deal of pain throbbing within your stomach, and your heart beats even faster. Your right arm begins to weaken as slowly, as it slowly envelops in the uh, sheen of the bright green light. Oh shit! A burst of green uh, smoke suddenly uh, <clears throat> emerges from the orb. You can't help but inhale the fumes as the bright light stuns to the surrounding area. Within seconds, the nearby area is covered in a thick smoke. Try as you might, you fail to find your uh, mentor as you clutch your your way around, trying to find him. Hard to breathe. Sleeping gas. Mr. York, hold your breath. You reply with a shaky voice. Just my luck. You drop to your knees, and every inch of your body feels heavy as stone. Your fast-beating heart is now uh, flowing a very mellow beat. Following a very mellow beat, you can't help but fall onto the surface of grass. A splash of blood comes out of your mouth as, as you give out a coughing fit. Your vision blurs, and then you're unconscious. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? We'll just... That's a long thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I think we'll um we'll end this here. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice to see these characters again. I, I do like them; they're fun. Uh, so I'll see you around, everyone.